Good afternoon and welcome to my second video on eyepieces. After my last video uh, on basically an introduction to eyepieces, uh, which you can find a link to down below if you don't understand any of the terminology or anything that we're going to talk about today, I received a lot of questions about specific eyepieces. Uh, I want to upgrade my eyepiece. What do you suggest I go to? And there are basically several different levels of eyepieces as far as I'm concerned. And they all pretty much start out the same with these inch and a quarter puzzles that probably came with starter telescopes. And there's really nothing wrong with these uh, to start out with. Having two or three of these in your kit is not a bad thing. Uh, in my accessories box, I have several of these that I hand out to people that need a, an eyepiece focal length that they don't actually have and they want to try, see what it'll do. The downsides to these are they have a small field of view, uh, so you don't get to see a whole lot when you look through them. You, you don't have a very wide view. Uh, they're small. Uh, that can be difficult to hold on to when it's very hot outside and your hands are sweaty or it's very cold outside and you've got big, heavy, thick gloves on. And also, as you start getting up into the uh, higher powers, the glass that's in here gets smaller and smaller and smaller, which makes it very difficult to keep your eyes centered over it. And they also don't have a lot of eye relief, meaning they're difficult to, to use with glasses. So when you, when you hold them up here, you really got to bury it in or, or take your glasses off to use them. So the most common question is, I have these and I want to upgrade to something um, a little nicer than these $20, $30 puzzle eyepieces. So the next step up is going to be something like this uh, Celestron XLLX. Uh, these are bigger eyepieces, as you can see. Uh, they are a little heavier. They've got a lot nicer little rubber uh, grip ring around them, which makes them easier to hold on to. If you're doing solar and your hand is sweaty, that's it's no problem. If you've got a big glove on, that's no problem. They fit all your inch and a quarter uh, telescopes, and of course with a, an adapter they'll go to two inches as well. Uh, nice thing about them is uh, the glass here is very large even when you get into the smaller ones like this is a, a nine millimeter and it goes down to five and the glass is about the same size so it's not as hard to keep your eyes centered over it as it is with with the uh, the puzzles they have a twist up eye cup which is really nice um, it's a very soft rubber so whether it sits on your glasses or, or actually on your eye you know around your eye it, it uh, it's really nice uh, they have Excellent eye relief, and they're uh, about 60 degrees, I believe, uh, field of view. Now, another nice thing about these is they're not that expensive. Uh, they are much more expensive than the, the puzzles, of course, but uh, these, I think, run uh, between $80 and $90 a piece. So, if you watched my last video, which I hope you did, you realize you only need two or three good eyepieces. So, you know, having three of these is not really that big of an investment. Uh, it may be, you know, if you only spend hundred dollars on your telescope, but keep in mind that these provide almost 50% of, of the viewing quality in a, in a telescope because you've got usually two objectives. Uh, you've got the glass on the front of a refractor and then this, or a reflector, you've got a couple of mirrors and this. So this is a, a big piece of what you see. So it's worth spending a little extra money on it. So let's say you know you've got this or you got something equivalent and you want to take the next step up. Uh, the next step up is going to be something like this. This is an Orion Stratus, which is very similar to the Batter Hyperions. Uh, I've actually had people uh, leave me comments and tell me that the Orions are, are slightly better than the Batters, and I'm not sure if that's true or if it's a sample variance where you know th that particular Orion was better than that particular batter. I haven't used enough of each to know. What I do know is that they're very similar and uh, I would not hesitate to use either one. Now uh, the advantages to this are this is bigger, heavier, yet again, nice rubber uh, ring around it, good eye cup, excellent eye relief, and we're now at 68 degrees field of view instead of 60 or 50 like we'd had before. The other really nice thing about these is they will work in inch and a quarter telescopes and they will work in two inch telescopes without an adapter. 
So they're one of the few eyepieces out there that'll actually go either direction. And the image quality in these is, is very good. Now we're up to say about $140, $150 a piece. Um, but these, I have really enjoyed using these over the years and uh, have no problem recommending these if that's the, the level of eyepiece you're looking for. So once we get out of the $140, $150 range, what's the next step up? Well, at this point, you might as well just go whole hog and let's go up to one of the top of the line, Teleview. Uh, some of you probably recognized it immediately by that particular color of green. Uh, Teleview is the only one that uses that color. So let's run through this. The good to the Teleview is it's a nice, big, serious eyepiece. Um, Optically, they are as close to perfect as you're probably going to get. They are right up there with uh, the Pentax and the uh, Nikon eyepieces as, uh, if not the best made, definitely in the top two or three. Uh, and even people that don't like these uh, as much as the Pentaxes or uh, some of the other real high-end ones won't argue the fact that they are definitely in the high end. Now, Teleview makes a lot of different eyepieces like most manufacturers. This particular one is a Nagler. Um, the Naglers uh, have an 82 degree field of view, so you're getting pretty wide without getting a little over the top. If you get into like the Ethos range with their 100 degree, I think that's a little too much for me, uh, but that's a very personal thing. The 82 is pretty much a nice sweet spot. They uh, have excellent eye relief. They have uh, a very nice eye cup, huge glass in them you see, nice wide range of, of sizes uh, to cover just about anything you'd ever want. I think they go from, oh gosh, a three or a four, maybe. I think it may be a three millimeter all the way up to like a 31. Uh, so th there's a huge range to choose from. Now, of course, the downside to this, there's a couple of them. One, when you get up into the bigger ones, I think it's the 16 and up, uh, only fit in two inch telescopes. Uh, below a 16, I believe you can get in the inch and a quarter variety. So uh, that may be a consideration, especially if you're working with a less expensive telescope. However, if you're working with a less expensive telescope, you're probably not gonna wanna pay 350 plus per piece. Um, this is a 17 millimeter Nagler and it was right around $350 new. They go up, if you get into the really big ones, up to six, seven hundred dollars uh, So this is definitely a huge investment. Now, I use the word investment uh, very intentionally because Naglers hold their value extremely well. Uh, puzzles do not. The Celestron LXs, yeah, not really. The Orion Stratuses, believe it or not, hold their, their value reasonably well. Um, it's not unusual to see these go for over $100 on eBay used. So you pay $140, you get $100, that's not bad. The Televues, like the Naglers, you can expect to get 75% or better of what you paid for them easily. Um, you can eat, I've even seen them more than that. And I've seen a few, you get more than what you paid for because they don't make that particular model anymore but don't hold out for that. That's, that's rare. Um, the nice thing about these is they are so good optically that there is no question that they're providing the best view possible uh, through the telescope and the seeing conditions that you've got. There's a lot of things that you can't control in astronomy. You can't control the clarity of the atmosphere. You can't control how much you know dust and humidity and all of that stuff there is. Um, it's difficult to control the cool down on a large uh, reflector telescope because as soon as it gets to a certain temperature, the temperature outside has dropped again and so you're constantly playing catch up. Even with fans, it's tough to keep the collimation exactly right. Uh, there's a lot of things that are just really difficult to control. If you use eyepieces in this uh, quality, that is one thing you don't have to worry about. It is not that your eyepiece isn't good enough to handle a really fast Dobsonian scope, which is what some people have problems with. It's definitely not the eyepiece, so you can move on from there. So that is my lineup. Uh, in my case at the moment are the, the, in the accessory case, just kind of thrown in are the, the puzzles. Then I have uh, in my eyepiece case, a full set of the Celestron LXs and a set of the Teleview Naglers. 
and that covers everything I ever wanted to do and then some, and I don't think I'll ever be buying another eyepiece. So if you have any questions or anything, leave them down below. Please subscribe, uh, like the video as well, and um, I will try and post links to these uh, down below. Thanks again for watching.